still on panel ARDL. In this video, I'm going to show you the practical approach to estimating a panel ARDL model. But before you proceed, make sure you watch this listed prerequisite videos. You must understand how to reshape your data from wide to long, understand the tips to building a panel data, and above all, know the basics of panel ARDL. These are very simple and interesting videos. So what is your research all about? In this tutorial, the research objective will be to evaluate the relationship between financial deepening and economic growth in selected countries from 1980 to 2015. I'm not going to make the data for this tutorial available because it's still classified, but you can have access to the do file which will be on my website. So you can always load in your data and follow my procedure. So please, again, the data I'm using for this practical example will not be available. So in this research, we are looking at finance and economic growth. The number of countries in this sample they attain, and the period is from 1980 to 2015. I'm using four variables, GDP growth, which is a proxy for economic growth, domestic credit, government expenditure, and trade openness. And in this tutorial, having outlined 10 steps in my video under the basics of panel ARDL, I'll be covering steps one to four. In my usual practice, I'm not going to lump all the steps in one video because I need to uh, give you a deep and uh, better understanding of each procedure. So this video will cover basically steps one to four. So step one, specify the model. I said it before in the video on the basics of panel ARDL that we are mostly interested in the re-parameterized ARDL PQQQ error correction model. And you can see the model specification here. GDP growth rate, which is a proxy for economic growth, is a dependent variable. Theta here is the adjustment coefficient. This is the error correction term in brackets. The number of lags to be used is a P minus one lag for the dependent variable and Q minus one lags for the regressors. And these are short run parameters to be estimated. So these are short run coefficients. So this is the model specification. In case you don't know how to specify your model, you can always adopt what I have and modify it to suit your own analysis. So let's move over to Stata to perform steps two to four. Before you begin, you have to make sure you run this xtset command to prepare Stata to run panel data analysis. So I run this and here you can see we have a panel variable and a time variable and it's strongly balanced. So now we are good to go. So step two here says perform descriptive and summary statistics. You can either use the xtsum command or the sum command. The xtsum command will show you the different statistics per panel while the sum command will just show you the averages for the variables in the sample. So let me run the two and show you exactly what I mean. So here you have the two codes. This is for the xtsum command and here you can see overall between and within. And you have for all the four variables that I'm using to run this analysis. If you look closely, the mean values here is the overall for the sample. And if you look at the sum command here, it's exactly the same. So whether you use the XT sum command or the sum command, you are still going to have the same information. So most times I prefer to use the sum command unless there is a need for me to use the XT sum. So number one, make sure you run your descriptive statistics. It shows you the average values of the variables you are using, but most importantly, the standard deviation shows you the variations in the sample. So the standard deviation of each variable, particularly for the dependent variable, is very important. And you also have the minimum and the maximum values. So descriptive statistics is important. And under panel data, you also have different groups. So that means you can also perform the summary statistics for each group by running this command. So you have it here. I have the sample divided into CFA and non-CFA countries. So if I need to know the summary statistics of each group, all I need to do is to include the if command. So I'm going to run this too and see what we have. So we have the summary statistics for both groups. This is for countries classified as CFA countries and this is for countries classified as non-CFA countries. This table alone can give you a lot of write-ups. You can write a lot of descriptive analysis and comparative analysis between CFA countries 
and non-CFA countries. So it's always good for you to build your panel data in such a way that you can explore the different um, heterogeneities that make up the groups in the sample. So we have done descriptive statistics showing the characteristics of each variable. This is what I just showed you. This is for the summary statistics for the entire sample. We can see the mean values, the standard deviations, the minimum and the maximum. And I wrote here that the standard deviation is large enough to explore the variations in the data. The next one is the summary statistics for the groups that make up the panel. So this, like I showed you earlier, is for CFA countries and this is for non-CFA countries. You can see the codes that are used to generate them. So this will give you an interesting write-up by the time you include this in your manuscript. So always perform descriptive statistics. Step three will be to perform correlation analysis. So this is the code to run that. It's a simple call command. I'm highlighting this. I run it. It is always important to perform correlation analysis to show that there is no exact or linear dependence among the regressors in a bit to avoid multicollinearity. So from the results here, we can see that all the regressors are not linearly dependent on one another. So this model will definitely pass the multicollinearity test. You can also perform correlation analysis for the groups that make up the sample, that is for the subgroups. So I have for CFA and non-CFA just the way I did it for summary statistics. So let me run this. So here's the correlation analysis for CFA countries. And here it is for non-CFA countries. This is really, really good. You can also write a few things about what you can observe between the two tables. So here, step three is also done. The correlation analysis will show that the regressors do not have perfect or exact linear dependence on one another. This portion is for the entire sample, while this portion is for the subgroups that make up the sample. So make sure you always perform correlation analysis when you are running panel ARDL. Let's move over now to step four. Step four is to perform unit truth tests. There are so many unit truth tests to be performed. You can perform the in person and chain test or the Levin Lean and Chew test or the Breton test. And so many papers categorize them as first generation or second generation. And they all have different assumptions too. For instance, the IPS, which is the in person and chain test, assumes that the slopes are heterogeneous, while the LLC assumes that the slopes are homogeneous. So I'm going to perform the IPS test for simplicity. I'm going to use constant and just one lag. And this is the code to run it. So I'm going to run all the four at the same time and explain the results. So here is the IPS test for GDP growth using just to lag. The statistic says negative 8.1594 and the p-value is significant at the 1% level. So GDP growth rate is stationary at levels. So let's look at DCF. The statistic is even positive which clearly shows this is a non-stationary series. Even when you look at the p-value. So DCF is a non-stationary series. Let's look at Expenditure, statistic is clearly significant at the 1% level. So expenditure is also stationary at level. But the same cannot be said for trade openness, which is clearly a non-stationary series. So among the four variables, two are stationary at levels and two are non-stationary. So for the non-stationary variables, all we have to do is to take the first difference. So I have the code written out here for the first difference of DCF and the first difference of trade. I'm highlighting both and I just run it. So taking the first difference, we can see the result here. The first difference of DCF is now stationary, while the first difference of trade is also stationary. I also performed this test using trend, but the results are also the same. At levels, GDP growth rate and expenditure are stationary, while DCF and trade are non-stationary. So it's the same result I obtained. You can also perform unit two tests for the groups that make up the sample. I have the codes written here, so let me just run it. So you can see here for CFA countries, GDP growth rate is stationary at levels. DCF is non-stationary. Expenditure is also stationary at levels. White trade openness is non-stationary. So to make it stationary, all you have to do is also to take the first difference. So let's check out the unit two test for non-CFA countries. I run this. So for non-CFA countries, GDP growth rate is stationary at level. 
DCF is non-stationary, you can see the p-value. Expenditure is also non-stationary, you can see the p-value. While trade openness is also non-stationary. So to make them stationary, all you have to do is to take the first difference. To perform the LLC test, which is 11 lean and chew, it requires that your data must be strongly balanced. So if you have a gap in any of the series, the LLC test will not run. So I could not run LLC test for my data because there were some gaps in some of the series. So I'm restricting the unit root test to only the IPS. So here in PowerPoint is the outcome of our unit root test. From this, we were able to ascertain that none of the variable is integrated of order two. In level, GDP growth rate is stationary and expenditure is stationary. While at first difference, domestic credit is stationary and trade openness is stationary. And you have the codes I used here, stated here. So this is the code for the general sample, the full sample. And this is the code I used to generate for the subgroups. You can always modify these codes to suit your analysis. So this one gives you some level of confidence that the series you are using are not I2. If you have I2 series, please don't use it. You can either use IO or I1 variables. So I've concluded steps one to four in this tutorial. Don't go away. My next video will cover steps five to seven. Again, please read up these references. Don't skip them. Do not replace reading with video tutorials. You have to read up to understand the basics of panel ARDL. Again, the papers listed here are very simple and interesting to read. Most of these tutorials, I pull them from some of these papers. Thank you once again for staying with me. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Share my videos and my links to your students, to your colleagues, and to your cohorts. Don't go away. I'll be right back with videos on step 5 to 7.